Okay, what I want you to do on that sheet of paper is I want you to write down, number one, given that the measure of angle A is 60 and the measure of angle B is twice the measure of angle A, we're now going to prove that A and B are supplementary. Well, you may say to yourself, well, that's simple, it's obvious, because 2 times 60 is what? 120. And 60 plus 120 is? And isn't that the very meaning of supplementary? Yes? You just proved it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take that idea and we're going to put it on paper and we're going to justify every step mathematically. And the way that we learn to prove things is by proving them. First we prove the simple stuff. First we prove the simple stuff, Elena. And as we prove the simple stuff, we get better and better and better. And then we can start to prove more complicated things. Okay? So what you do first, whenever you have a proof, is you start with the given. So we know that angle A, the measure of angle A, is equal to 60 degrees. We know that that's true. We know that the measure of angle B is equal to 2 times the measure of angle A. Now the reason why this is true is going to be given. That's actually the reason or the justification for it. Okay? So Amber, you always start with the givens. You always start with the givens. Okay? Now, what do we know about angle B? <coughs> Go ahead. How come we only start with given on these and not the ones that we're just doing? We did. I wasn't stressing the givens as much, but remember when we went over <coughs> the solutions? It always said in the solution, start with the given equation and then proceed from there. We, we did start with the givens, but I was stressing more the algebraic steps. I wanted to focus on those more. Okay? But now, today, we're going to not only do the steps, we're also going to say, let's start with the givens. And so that's how your proof is always going to start, Jasmine. Okay? All right. What do we know about angle B? It's twice the measure of angle A. So I know that I can take angle B. And what can I do now with the measure of angle A? What can I do with this? Multiply by 2. I'm going to multiply what by 2? 60. 60, right? Now, which property is that that we just did? <coughs> you said it. Somebody said it. Substitution. substitution. Why is it substitution? Because we did what? You're um, substituting the measure of angle A for 60. That's exactly right. We just replaced the measure of angle A with 60, right? Okay. Now we know that angle B is equal to how much? One. 120. And that process right there is called simplify. You could also, by the way, call it substitution. Why could you call that substitution? Substituting 2 times 60. Yeah, you're replacing 2 times 60 with 120. Does this make sense so far? Okay. Now, what can we do with angle B and angle A? What can we do with angle B and angle A? Angle A plus angle B is equal to 180 degrees. So we added the two together. And that right there, if angle A, yes, you can, you can add two angles together. And that gives you 180 degrees right there. So let me write it like this first. Instead of angle A, let me say 60 plus 120 is equal to 180. Okay? This is using angle A and B. And then what does this show us? We now have 180 degrees. So this means that 
angle A and <coughs> angle B are supplementary. Now, what's the reason why they're supplementary? Well, we added them together, right? And what we get? We got 180, right? That Kelsey is the very definition of what it means to be supplementary. If you add two angles and you get 180, right? So the final thing we do here is we conclude with definition of supplementary angles. That's what it means to be supplementary. You add them, you get 180. Okay, does that make sense? Now what we've just done is we've given a statement by statement proof, a justification <coughs> that shows that if angle A is 60 degrees <coughs> and if angle B is twice angle A, we're definitely going to get supplementary angles. It's a pretty simple idea, but we start with the simple and then we go from the simple to the complex. Does that make sense? Okay, all right. Let's look at this question right here. Number four. Look at the picture to the right. Given that angles two is congruent to angle three, prove that one and three are indeed supplementary. So the goal is to show that one and three are supplementary. So the proof starts like this. We know that 2 is congruent to 3. How do we know that? It tells us. It's given. You're right. It tells us. It's given. How do we know that the measure of 2 is equal to the measure of 3? You haven't done this before, by the way. So if you don't know yet, that's okay. But how do I know that the measure of 2 is equal to the measure of 3? Okay. This is very important. It's a very simple step, but I don't want you to miss it, Alexa. We know they're congruent, right? So if they're congruent, that means that their measures have to be equal. What you're going to fill in right here in part A is definition of congruent segments. That's what it means for two, not segments, I'm sorry, I have to take that back. Definition of congruent what? Angles. angles. That's what it means for two angles to be congruent. If two angles are congruent, then their measures are exactly the same. So in part A right here, you would fill in definition of congruent angles. Now, in the section, we've got something called the linear pair theorem. So let's go to that real quick. This is something that will end up in your portfolio. So there's my linear pair theorem, and it says if two angles form a linear pair, then what's the conclusion? They are supplementary. supplementary. What's a linear pair again? What makes a linear pair a linear pair? The two angles have to be adjacent. What does adjacent mean? They share a common side, right? And if they share a common side, also the angle has to form a straight angle, right? And what's the measure of every single straight angle in the universe? 180 degrees. So if they're sharing a side in common and they add up to 180, well, they've got to be a linear pair, right? So if they're a linear pair, then they're supplementary. The hypothesis right here says that A and B form a linear pair. That follows the if. The conclusion, A and B are supplementary. We're actually going to use that theorem. So now let's go right back to question number four. And now look at the picture right here. This is a straight line, right? Follow the hand right here. And one and two, do they share a side? Yes. yes, they share this side right here. Do they add up to 180? Yes. So what you're going to fill in right here is that angles one and two are a linear pair. They are a linear pair. And the reason? Linear pair theorem. Now we know that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to 180 degrees. How do we know that? That's from the definition of supplementary angles. What allows me to replace 
angle two right here with angle three. They're congruent. Oh, yes, they're congruent. So which property am I using if I replace angle two with angle three? Substitution. Substitution. So now, what does that say if angle one plus angle three is equal to 180? Go back to what we're trying to do. We're trying to prove what, Logan? Prove that one and three are supplementary. That's exactly what we're trying to prove, and that's where we are in step six. So now, what can we say about one and three? One and three are supplementary. supplementary. Jasmine, when you do a proof, you always start with the givens. And Alexis, when you finish a proof, you always finish with what you're trying to prove. So now you know what you can always begin with, and now you know what you can always end with at the same time. It's what goes in between that matters. It's all the stuff you put in between this logical sandwich that matters. Okay? So number 6D, we can say that 1 and 3 are supplementary. And then, hey, look at the reason. What does the reason say? Definition of supplementary angles. If two angles add up to 180, well, that's the very definition of what it means to be supplementary, right? And so there we go. Okay, let's do number five. I'm going to clip this out. Here we go. And let's do number five together. Use the given plan to write a two-column proof. So let's make our column right here. These are my statements, and these are my reasons. Okay? Now, what am I given? I'm given that x is the midpoint of ay. So this right here, Alexa, that's the midpoint of this and this. What's the consequence of x being the midpoint of ay? What's the natural consequence of that? It's halfway. It's halfway. So therefore, what can we say about ax and yx? AX plus XY equals Using the segment addition postulate. We can also say that ax is what? What relationship does ax have with yx? They're congruent. Does that make sense? Because where is x again? It's the midpoint. That makes perfect logical sense, right? Okay, so from the given, we know that x is the midpoint of ay, and y is the midpoint of what? xb. So y is here. So what can we say about xy and by? They're congruent, and we can also use the segment addition postulate, right? xy plus by is equal to xb, right? Does that make sense? Okay. Now, what do we want to prove? This is what we want to prove. We want to prove that ax is what? Congruent to yb. So here's what we're going to do. Always start with the what? Givens. So we're going to start with the givens. So we say, okay, x is the midpoint of ay and y is the midpoint of xb. The reason behind that, well, that's just given. Now we can say that x ax is congruent to what? ax is congruent to <coughs> xy, and the reason for that is definition of midpoint. That's what it means to be a midpoint. Okay? We can also say that xy is congruent to what? YB. YB. And again, it's actually going to be the same reason, isn't it? Definition of midpoint. Now, I'm going to give a statement, and then you tell me the reason for the statement, okay? AX plus XY equals AY. 
There's the statement. What's the reason for that? Segment addition postulate. And I'm going to abbreviate now. Okay? And then I can also say what? XY plus uh, YB is equal to XB. Right? That's also the segment addition postulate. Okay? So now I have the two things are the same, but wait a minute. XY right here plus YB, I have in something in common between these two equations right here. Look at those two equations. AX plus XY equals AY, and XY plus YB is equal to XB. What's the common between the two equations? XY is what they have in common, right? Mm -hmm. And by the way, we also know that um, XY is congruent to what? XY is congruent to AX and XY is congruent to YB. So let's see. What can we do now in order to show that the two are congruent? AX plus YB equals XB. AX plus YB. I mean, yeah, equals XB. AX plus YB equals XB? Yeah, that's what I said. I just took out the X's, cross out the X's. Okay. Make sure I'm on the right track here. Yes, I am. Okay, so I want to get these two guys congruent. I want to get this guy congruent to this guy. And I know that this is congruent to that. Can I say that X... Ooh. This computer passed gas. It did. I thought it was Maggie's hiccup. It eeped at me. Maggie passed gas. Okay, all right, let's get back on track here. We know that AX is congruent to XY, right? AX is congruent to XY, right? Okay, so since AX is congruent to XY, and XY is congruent to YB, I actually heard somebody say it, why not just use the transitive property? And I can use the transitive property. Because if AX is congruent to XY, and if XY is congruent to YB, then what can I conclude from that? then a a a x excuse me a x is congruent to y b right here and what reason is that that's the transitive property which is similar to one of our logical laws which logical law is that syllogism so this is the transitive property of what? Equality or congruence? Congruence. Yes. Now, did I conclude? I don't want you to miss this. Did I conclude with what I was trying to prove? Yes. Therefore, I'm done. Therefore, I'm done. I, I had some other technique in my brain, and I don't know why my brain went that way. So, oops. Thank you. I need forgiveness, too. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's do number six. Write a justification for each step given that, what does the symbol here mean? Ray. Ray, BX, does what? Bisect. And what does that word bisect mean? Cuts, Cuts right in half. So now we know that angle A, B, X, X is congruent to? C, B, X. CBX, because this is a bisector, 
and that ABC and XBC are 45 degrees, write a justification for each step. Okay? Number one, BX bisects ABC. What justifies that step? Given. That's exactly right. So the justification for one is given. What justifies that ABX is congruent to XBC? So let's follow this carefully. A, B, X is congruent to X, B, C. What justifies that? Well, we know that BX is a what? Bisector. It's a bisector. So from the very definition of... No, from the very definition of bisector, we know that this has to be true, right? Mm -hmm. So the justification here, Logan, is definition of bisector, angle bisector. Now, what is the justification for ABX, the measure of ABX, is equal to the measure of XBC? This is the one that's very simple, but you've got to remember it. We went from, what's the symbol? Congruence to equals. So this is another definition. Definition of congruence. That's exactly right. Whenever you go from congruence to equals, you have your definition of congruence. Why can I say that XBC is 45 degrees and ABX is 45 degrees? We know that they're equal in measure, but why can we say they're 45 degrees? Because it's given. Right here. It was given to us, right? So right here, we know that this is 45 degrees, and this is 45 degrees because it was given to us. Now, what allows us to say that the measure of ABX plus the measure of XBC is the measure of ABC? Angle addition postulate. That's exactly right. What allows me to replace this and this with 45 and 45? Substitution. Substitution. You guys are golden on this. 45, 45. What allows me to replace 45 plus 45 with 90? Substitution. Substitution. Or we could also say, simplify, what allows me to say that angle ABC is a right angle? It's 90 degrees. It's 90 degrees, and that is the very definition of a right angle. So the justification here is definition of right angle. You guys are good at this. Because it's English. It's English. It's English. That's exactly right. Does this make sense? Well, what we just did, okay? Now, let's go back to 2.5. Was 2.5 about the algebra? No. It was all about what? Justification. This is why. Because we're justifying everything the same way we did in 2.5. Okay. Your homework for tonight, your homework for tonight is only three questions. Okay? Seven, eight, and nine from the practice and problem solving. Okay, so questions 7, 8, and 9 from the 2.6 practice and problem solving. Okay, just those three questions. We're going to use the remainder of the period to see how much of this you can get. And this is what will be due tomorrow. Uh, it's in section 2.6, practice and problem solving. That's what I do know. It's on, oh, come on, go in. We got it, it's on page 114. 114? Page 114, thank you. All right, I need something silly to conclude my video with. So always remember that Walmart spelt backwards is tram law. God bless you. Father, Son.